All right, and it looks like I got that right on the first try. I gotta do this too, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay. All right, and with that, we start the fourth episode of Notes to Strike a Chord Live. And I'm your host, Doug Lindauer. And once again, oh, there is, of course, going to be always one thing I forget. I do need to update the Discord link. Let me do that right quick. Hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. There we go. And now I have it in there, so... We can drop it in there. What am I missing? I don't think I'm missing anything. All right, with that, we can get the show started. I am so sorry about that. I really have tried to do a better job tonight getting started. But, you know, that's the way it is sometimes when you're a one-man show. You try to think of everything, but you can't. Anyway, we're, of course, playing Dungeons & Dragons Online. And my stream kitty is behind the computer instead of front of it where she should be trying to cause mischief it's going to be one of those nights go get in your spot people want to see you they don't want to see me come on get in your spot anyhow about today I know this is one of those days Today we're covering House Caneth, and then we're moving into the the, uh, the classes, and then I'll have to find find my other notes. Uh, looks like I'm working on uh, feats, basically, classes and feats, and what I'd like to see. I know it's a little bit of um, how you call it, power creep, but. The idea that sorcerers and favored souls need less because they have more spell points to work with is more and more becoming a really bad option because, in all honesty, power creep exists on both sides. And a lot of high-level mobs, even for, you know, first-lifers are just doing no damage. And it's not even just more than just doing no damage I mean people have got to feel invested in the game otherwise they're not going to come back and I think that first lifers need to be as effective as multi lifers I mean obviously multi lifers get more more but you just can't I mean every time I try and maybe it's just that me I'm not good I gotta get good but every time I try to run an arcane, a wizard, or a sork to 20, it just seems like such a slog. And then I see other players that, you know, admittedly most of them are multi-lifers, and they just go in and own face. And I, I, I'd like to own face. I've come up with creative ways to do it my own way. Uh, my all-electric artificer and cheap build here. They're pretty good. But anyhow, let's get into the meat of the show. Of course, we were doing the houses, and we're going to go today to House Caneth. It's the last of the houses. Now, some of you are wondering why I might not go to Eberron or Ravenloft, but they're relatively newer content. They're really content that was released kind of after the team had sussed exactly what they wanted to do out. And so, really, I don't, I don't think they're, I don't even think Evening Star is old enough to warrant a, what can I do better? I mean, there are little things like, yes, and I guess I could go back and look at it. It's just, I didn't seem to work my time. Now, the difference is Keeneth, even though it was released late, it's part of, when they put it in, 
they put it in and made it be part of the Eberron setting. So in all honesty, it's still suffering a bit from, well, we kind of want to keep it consistent with Eberron. All right, well, first thing that they did, though, is this was after the late game improvements. And so the textures and the thought that went into the design is just bloody epic. And you walk into Kanith and you can tell it was so much later than Kandarik or Deneath or especially Fairlane. And Jurassica. Uh, it's very Rococo, very Baroque. You walk through Kanith and you kind of get a feeling of the of the lore of Eberron with the, the magical floating crystals and the tall floating towers. And that's a great view when you make a blade forge to come out. Just totally epic view. It's just a gorgeous place to be. When I was doing notes to strike a chord, uh, before I decided to do this live show, I used, one of my animation sets were done in House Canis because it's just a wonderful place to be. The blues, the dark woods, the golds. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit. <laughs> A little bit of trouble breathing. I don't know why. Well, I know why. Over here, I live in the middle of farm country. And it's tree breeding time. I have had a solid migraine for the last three days. Oh. Alright. Anyway, the other thing they did I thought was wonderful. That gave a real feel. Oh, I'm going to catch it. Uh, to Kenneth. Is they put in really Kenneth things like this elevator. To get to the house patron, you need to take the magic elevator. And I was hoping Sharn would look a lot like this. But Sharn's going to look different. But it's probably going to have magical elevators. Hmm. Oh. Can you go up here? There's an airship back there. I never really noticed that. It's a cool looking airship. I don't think it's any of the kind we get. I think that's actually a unique airship, isn't it? Hmm. But it gives you this really sense of what Kenneth is all about. Magic as technology. All right, I'll give you the yawn. Jeez. Waiting for the elevator. Every now and then you'll see somebody come in as a new Blade Forge from down there, and it's pretty freaky. It's a one-way elevator. You can't go back up. If anybody's on the elevator, it goes down. You, it doesn't doesn't go back up. I've tried. When it goes back up, you fall through it. I've tried. I've tried. I created Blade Forge on a second account. Then I was up there to do the fall. Yeah, went right through. But all these other elevators are perfectly useful. Are perfectly working. Sorry, I almost said useful because the other two really aren't. They're just fun. There's this elevator. This one's the second most useful because it does take you down to where the vendors are. Here, you're trying to get to the vendors and these stairs are perfectly good. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is... Maybe this is some kind of like, you know, ADA thing. I would love to see magical wheelchairs. That would be so cool. Now the minus to it. 
Here, I'll show you all the quests. There's um, one, two, and three, four, five, and that's it. Now, the challenges are in here, too, but those are kind of... You kind of have to have a certain build, I think, to be able to sow them, sow them reliably. Or you just do them at such over level that it's really super grindy to get materials. Because no matter how over level you are, they give a small amount of materials. But, you know, then, you know, you kind of have, you know, I want 150 so I can get a pot. Well, that's like ten runs. It's not it's a lot of time to invest. So there's just not a lot to do in here. I mean you got the crafting hall, but the one in Kandarik is more convenient. If you've got an air, the big airship, that's even even more convenient. And the challenges give nice things. And there is a teleporter. But oddly enough, no airship tower. I mean, there's an airship tower, but you can't get to it. It's behind there. So, I don't know. I just get the feeling that House Kenneth is a little underutilized. We have some vendors down here, but they don't have all the artificer scrolls, and it's really without them. And some of them don't. Some of the spells don't have scrolls. And therefore, it's really, really kind of hard to, like, flesh out your Artificer spell list. It's just not good. You know? I just don't know what else more to say. <laughs> of course, I did that again, too, didn't I? I am not on Argo. I am on Kyber tonight. Well, let's take a look at what I'd like to see. All right, one of my one of my always little pet peeves in the zone is the fact that once you get to the epic level trainer, there are no pots. Where is it? Is it just 20? Probably. Okay, I don't actually know where to go. Because none of these are taking an epic challenge. It's been so long, I thought it was just the 20 guy, because 15, 19, and 20, I thought it was 20 plus. I have really not done this in so long, guys. Maybe I can't... Uh, no, that doesn't make any sense. about to say something, but I realized how dumb it was before I actually said it. Weird. Well, that's why God gave us the wiki. Well, that's... 
that's not working. Okay, trying to figure this out. Doesn't have a direct link to the thing, so epic jade. There we go. the trading spot though okay I guess they're just not listed there so I don't know that's confusing to me Because these are apparently are supposed to be epic ones, but they don't say epic anymore. Oh, there they are. Epic. Here they are. Okay, so you need the regular ones to get the base and then all the epics for upgrade. Alright, so that makes sense. Never mind. But all you can't you can't use you cannot use the epic items for anything other than upgrades. So yeah, that's kind of always been a bum out. I'd like to see them add that. Yeah, it took so long. Another thing I'd like to see. We'll go down here see him i would like to see and i admit it because it's brothers of the forge is such a good quest and out of the three famous people in the game <laughs> hi hibernum thank you uh one of the, of the three my favorite is talbron and i would like to see another talbron quest down here in, in house camp just to help fill it up you know Multi selector, whatnot. But I think we need we need to see we need to keep touch with the past as long as we go into the future. You know, Talbron, you know, I, I feel he's a good mate. We we've got a lot of Jeets. We have too much of Jeets. And certainly we don't have enough Selimos. I'm hoping Selimos comes out big and and Sharn. But you know, Talbron's like stuck in that awkward middle where he's got a quest, but that's it. I guess I'm going to scoot my chair over since my cat won't get over here. I move my chair over so you guys can see my cat. She's not cooperating today, so I'm just going to move over. Alright, and what else do I want to see? Alright, yes, and we said it, we, we hinted at it last time. But we know about my pie in the sky thing, so at later level, say at about 15... Yeah, that uh, it's hard. You could get you can get through challenges. You can get starts through challenges. You can do Kenneth challenges for Kenneth favor. So what I'd really love to see is Artificer hires. I don't. I, I know that require a lot of programming or whatnot. But you know, wouldn't that be cool? Kind of get a combination Ranger Rogue. I, you know, they they would kind of like blow for saves but at least you know you could 
have something that could fight, maybe even heal a little bit, throw a, a pot or two. You know, have X amount of pots, say like 20. I just think it would be cool to have an artificer higher. I love art. I love artificers. I love everything about them. They could do a mix of them, some range. You know, some mechanic. You know, some single weapon fighter. It'd just be nice. The other thing I would like to see is. I would love to see you be able to turn in your challenge mats for collectibles crates. That would be so awesome. Matter of fact, that might, might have been something they already did. So let's let's take a look. And we're gonna look at it for collectibles. No. So say you get. Uh, I was thinking like five hundred. I kind of want it to be a little grindy. Sorry, I don't know why I'm yawning. I'm not that tired. Anyhow, I would love to see it where you would be able to turn in these mats and get boxes of collectibles. And even better yet, even if it was really grindy, you got to pick them. Oh, so awesome. So awesome of an idea. I mean, it would really help crafters out so much they could come in here get their work done get their challenges on get the collectibles they need and slowly but surely max out and it would help new people get into crafting because they know they could just come in here you know maybe get a couple of buds together with them three man these challenges three mans can do these most of these challenges Fairly well. We we have uh, three man these challenges, four four stars. Got a lot of mats, and I would love to just see that be able to be added to the the, the, the tapestry of crafting. The yeah, you know it, it just collectibles sometimes can be a little hard to find. And you need so many of them going on up. I mean, most of the... You can pretty much get to 270. With not more than Canis Essences. But if you want to become a guild crafter, you want to share that ability, you need collectibles. Oh lord, you need collectibles and you need tomes. But tomes you get by doing sagas. There's already a way to get purified dragon shards out there. What we need are literally collectibles. And in all honesty, a, a slightly grindy way, but a slightly grindy way that would allow us to target certain collectibles. I go through lodestones like they were, like my grandfather used to go through caramels. Oh my God. It's ridiculous. It's like those stones are used for like 90% of all weapon effects. It's crazy how many you will go through. All right. We've covered that. Now we're going to talk about the classes. And I'm going to go through all... What are there, 12 now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11... I've got 11 classes because I think some of them are not... Don't have a problem. Fighter's in good shape, especially feet wise. I'm sorry. There's nothing you can really do to fighter. I would like to say there was, but there's not. There isn't. They've dumped on us with the nice train. They've dumped AC on us. They've dumped melee power on us. If you wanted to go pure fighter, you are in a you are in a good 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 place. And fighter splash certainly has never really truly hurt anyone. Although, in all honesty, I kind of prefer uh, I prefer um, Barbarian Splash right now. I'm really in a big Barbarian Splash thing now. So, we're already in here. So, let's start right off with the Artificer. What does the Artificer need? And the simple thing is, and we've already kind of covered it, the Artificer needs scrolls. You cannot actually fill in all your slots 
your artificer spell slots with the free spells you're given. And if you pick even one wrong, you're all going to be searching for a scroll that may not even exist. I know they want to make some scrolls rare. Tie it, tie it, tie it to the favor system. Maybe we have to give them enough can of favor to get them, but by God, I'm sick and tired of having a level 30 artificer that still has three open spell slots. Where maybe I can even fill all three of those spell slots, but with some crummy spell no one ever would use. Give me all the spells. You can tie them into the thing. I understand you may want to want to block them off or whatnot, but boy, no. If I'm still running around with empty spell slots, you have failed. You have failed. All right, what are we? We're level 11. We gotta go out to like a barbarian place. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to Ataraxia. So we can talk about barbarians. I wanna shoot some stuff up. I went right by it, didn't I, Kandarik? Just another rainy day in House K. It's going to be raining in House K. Yeah, it's raining in House K. They've gotten to sync up pretty good. Now we got the red fence. All right, I haven't been there before. Good, all right, then we're going to shoot this place up. I'm not even going to take a higher. I got 82 pots and a repeating heavy crossbow. I'm good. All right, out here where the wild drow barbarians live. What do we need for the barbarian? I think we need uh, one or two-handed weapon feat bonus at level three. They're just a little feet starved, guys. Just a touch. And I think that if you gave them... Now, which path are you going to take for... Hey, look at this nice bonus. You know, at level three, you say, hey, are you going to be a two-weapon fighter or a one-handed fight? Maybe even a one-handed fighter, I don't know. Or a two-handed fighter. A two-weapon fighter, definitely between a two-weapon and a two-hand. Because you're going to have to take all the feats. And you're going to have to use it with your five lonely feet slots. And it's going to be all like, what do I got to pick? And I know that the barbarians don't actually have a lot of choice. But they also don't have any flexibility. And sometimes, you know, 12 barbarian splash or 8 barbarian splash are good things. And it would just be nice to have that little bit of, you know, you got to have to commit, you know. You have to commit to either two-weapon or two-handed fighting. But I think that just would make the Barbarian just that much more attractive. All right. Next up is the Bard. What do we, what can we do with the Bard level up feet-wise? Well, no, honestly, the bard, the bard's both in a good or in a bad place, feet-wise. So really, we're not going to be touching their feet. But the one thing they just did a song overhaul. But the one thing I think the bard really needed, since they're a little arcane and a little bit uh, divine, what they really needed was a song of restoration. And the Song of Restoration, you'd play it and would affect you and your allies and remove, you know, all the yeah, you know, all the usual effects that Restoration does. The thing is, you'd get, it would scale in power. So you'd just get a lesser Restoration song at level 5. Now, because we, you know, lesser Restoration is available, I think, at level 3 for clerics. And we don't want to, like, steal all their thunder. That's usually how bards get into trouble, is stealing Cleric's Thunder. 
but you get lesser restoration at 5, regular restoration at 10, and greater restoration at 15. And I know that kind of passes clerics a little bit with the greater restoration, because you're going to top, but you know, during heroics, you're not having a whole lot of, uh, you don't have a whole lot of extra bard songs. So I think it would be fairly good. You know, you're going to have to commit to expending a bard song. Yes, you get all the members of your party, but considering how some of these enemies drop things like con damage or negative levels, you, you might be spending your, your bard songs faster than you think. And Anthem doesn't recharge them that, that quickly. If you're relying on Anthem to get your bard songs back for a whole mission, and you're going to add on another thing like singing them, for restorations, you're going to go through them much quicker. So I don't think it would hurt the flow of the game at all. All right, we're going to move on to clerics now. We just talked about bards, so we have to talk about the cleric right afterwards. Because, you know, they go together like, you know, snake and monkeys. You know, clerics are usually stern healers, and, you know, bards are freewheeling guys, and whatnot. But the clerics are constantly being underpowered by the devs. I, I do not know why in this day and age where we have you know everybody's running around in static groups and sometimes soloing or, or, or duoing quests. Now we still have this mentality that bar or that clerics should only be healers and shouldn't have a whole lot of healing power and battle clerics are somehow bad. And clerics are simply two feet starved to do anything other than be one thing. A healer, a caster, or a melee guy. I've done my best with my cleric and I've got two of the three single weapon fighting parts and he's okay. But he is a heal bot. That's his role. I am not expected to get in and mix it up in the melee at even normal level 30s. What I want is to make them unfeet starved. And I don't want to take it to ridiculous levels because I know that if you gave them five feet free feats, everyone would play clerics. It's that simple. It would you would get ridiculous amounts of power. This is always fun. I got the wrong one. I need the fire one. And so, what I propose is kind of an in-between thing. Clerics are indeed feet starved. And that's bad. But we can't give clerics five free metamagic feats like we give wizards. But let's give them three. Let's give them a six, twelve, and eighteen. Why not? It seems like a reasonable thing. It's enough to take, you know, the, the two healing ones and, you know, a, a quicken. That way you can still be an effective healer and you still have to pick whether or not you're going to go caster or melee. And just maybe auto grant them as the healing meta magics. If you don't want to take the chance that somebody be makes this awesome spell casting melee guy that totally ignores healing. But as it stands right now, trying to build a cleric to do anything, kind of, usually it's so specific that it really isn't allowed to have any of the other flexibility other classes are allowed to have. I think three meta magics at 6, 12, and 18 could solve that problem very well. 
All right, next up is the Druid, and I am going to honestly tell you this, guys. I don't know what needs to be done with the Druid. I would hope that somebody was going to be out there to tell me what they think the Druid needs, because I'm not currently playing one. Um, I have one rolled up on its second life, but it, right now it's not holding my interest. I got, I got a lot of sticks in the water. Hey, Thotgore, you're level 11 druid. What does druid need? What would you like to see added either feet-wise, spell-wise, what, whatever, a little tweak to druid? Oh, I'm not actually playing much. I'm just running around the red fence, too, if you're asking about that. I'm just, like I said, Wednesday's kind of the talk show portion. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm off to go play Rocket League. Yeah, I just just realized that. Yeah, I'm going to be on for a little bit longer, but yeah, I've already done my DDOing for today. I appreciate the thought. Uh, you know, if you always kind of want to play, I know he hasn't been on Kyber lately, but you know, like I said, on Fridays we like to play too. Play with Bach on Fridays. This Bard Life, I can't do anything this weekend because I'm. That's the kind of the small reveal. Don't tell any. Don't don't tell her. But this weekend's Bard Life will be replaced with Monk Life. With Ariara Kinakanja. And so we're going to do all the things she likes to do. We'll probably get in to try to duo Epic Elites and spend some of the massive amounts of Platinum I have. Or we might be on Argonescent and she might still want to do Heroic Elites and spend some of the Platinum I have on repairs. I don't know which. But either way, it'll be an interesting uh, weekend this weekend on Bard Life. I really do. It's going to be pretty neat. But that being said, I do not know what I'm going to be doing or what to do about Druid. I know they made a pass over it. I'm not too sure it did any good. Uh, my first life through Druid was mostly kind of bear form, swipe, swipe. And I'm not really happy with my build this time. So, since I'm so horribly incompetent in druid mode now, I really don't have an opinion on it. I wish I did. Alright, next up is the favorite soul. And what does the favorite soul need? Well, in all honesty, from what I've seen, that divine casters are so, so much farther behind on the spell penetration curve than arcanes. There is just so many better ways to get spell pen on the arcanes than there are on the divines. And so I think Favorite Soul needs a little bit of free spell pen. 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe 6, 12, 18. Just enough because the, for some reason the, define, the divine spells seem to be save, more savable by enemy mobs than, than arcane ones are. So that's what I'd like to see. Other than that, I think Favorite Soul's in a pretty good place. Other than Spell Pen, really. And I mean, I just see I just see so many of my first life even on like normal, I see a lot of saves when I use destruction or implosion. I see a lot of double saves on implosion, so I only do a quarter damage. Or maybe I don't have enough. be able to get enough necro to get the damage I think half damage should be. Although, since it's supposed to out, right? Kill you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure everybody would be okay with plus three spell pen. 
But would it be? I mean, I'm talking about a lot of stuff. You know, it's obvious. Everybody would like it. But would it affect the game balance? And I don't think... I think plus three spell pen is right... Or, would bring the Divines right into line with First Life uh, Arcanes. Because I go through the Arcane Trees and it's always like, Hey, have some spell pen. Hey, it's free. But I don't see that in in the even in the supposedly casting uh, the casting trees. It, it it seems like it's really hard to get your spell pen up as a as a divine. I mean, a lot of people have said that you should take like three lives of sorcerer, then take your favorite soul life. You know, it's not like why should I have to take three lives of sorcerer? As a favored soul to match, oh, I don't know, a sorcerer with his finger of death. Why, why shouldn't my destruction be as as unsavable as a comparable finger of death? I mean, they effectively do the same thing. I don't remember it saying you found the mud pits, but it probably did. No, it actually hasn't. There it is. All right. What's next? Monk, if anybody doesn't know what's coming, you've obviously never met my wife. Remove the last nerf. The taking away of the weapon damage. Making it from one to one half. That was. It's a premium class, people. People pay real money. You can't grind out monk in any form of house favor. You gotta do it by getting favor to get DDO points. It's the only way to grind it out. Or spend money. They were not so overpowered that you needed to take away any of their weapon dice. I'm sorry. My wife is good at playing monks, not only because monks are a tough class, but she knows how to build them. All right! The alert box is not on. That was a raid, I guess. Hey, Ranger. Hey, Gumps Gang. Man, I, I, I separated all my uh, stuff, so I forget to turn the, forgot to turn the alert boxes back on. What is going on? Stay on. Oh, it's McVegan Pants. I kind of felt like it might have been McVegan Pants. Well, thank you for the raid, McVegan Pants. We're kind of just talking about DDO, and it's kind of like the talk show I'm doing now, and I appreciate it. Oh, the attention. It's nice to have attention. Okay, the next thing we have up, and it's kind of funny that we, we, the raid comes and you bring in Ranger, because we're going to talk about what the Ranger needs. And the Ranger has needed something since time in memoriam. There's one thing on the Ranger that is absolutely dumb. And that's... The fact that it spells, it gets four levels of spells, but it gets them at such a big range that your four level spells are caster level four, not caster level 20. What? So that means when at level 20, when you summon your creature companion, you summon, you do the cast, the, the cast, uh, you know, companion creature. You get a level four spider in level 20 content. It's got like 200 hit points and it gets promptly mowed down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Jinx. No one likes to be left behind. But can you imagine going, you know, it's like, oh, all right, I'm going into level 20 content and I've got this, this spell. I just got back at level 16 and it's going to cast a level 4 spider a level 4 
spider. Oh my lord. Please. Make the spells for the ranger. The caster level has got to match your level. I'm sorry. A level 16 creature can do okay in content like that. But a level 4 creature is just going to get mowed down. Caster level 4 is ridiculous. We've got to make the ranger spells just match the character's level because they're the ones that are getting left behind. Did I pick up all of them? I don't think so. Okay, what did I forget? I got one. I got picked them all up. All right, we're going to be able to do the, the rare here. Yeah, if anybody of you know DDL, what we're talking about now is what the classes need. So if you've got an opinion and you'd like to share it, you can type it out in the chat or you're more than welcome to join my Discord. Hold on. There it is. And you, you can join the Chord chat and let me know. Because that's what this is. It's a talk show. Yeah, we need people to talk. Oh, I gotta shoot this guy. Oh, I shot him before he could, like, respawn. That's great. It's always nice. I'd love anybody, if you'd love to follow, that would be great. The follow is up at the top. I do mostly DDO now. Uh, is there anything else I do? I, every now and then I do No Man's Sky, but I've kind of completed that. I did all the achievables. I figured that's good enough. Uh, we didn't get bacon. No bacon. Probably the rogue st uh, stole it, and that's what the next class is that I'm going to quickly go over. And that's the fact. What does the rogue need? I'm not currently playing one. I have no idea what the rogue needs. I don't know. I think the rogue probably could benefit from a multi-selector at level 3 as well. Like the barbarian. Almost any class that doesn't get a free feat or free feats. I mean, the ranger gets the whole two-weapon fighting chain for free. I the, Just the fact that the spells are stupid are the only problem I have with it. So when we think of the rogue, what could the rogue get just for level three where it's got to make a choice? And Are you going to be an assassin rogue? So maybe you get plus two to your, D, your assassin DCs. Rawls Might was the last help, right? I'm not too sure what Rawls Might is. For Rangers? Because you always get Ram's Might. You know, and, and that's just a regular buff. It's basically plus one size bonus to strength, or plus two size bonus to strength. So it's plus one to hit. Yeah, I'm sorry, Thoughtgore. I don't mean to do that. Yeah, okay, so. McVegan Pants brings up that the Thief Acrobat is there too. So maybe you could have at plus three, you can make a selection whether or not you're going to go Thief Acrobat, Mechanic, or Assassin. And then you can get Assassin, get plus two to Assassinate for Mechanic. Maybe you can get a double choice for Mechanic. Maybe you can take plus two to Thieves, to Thief Skills. Or plus two to, I'm sorry, there it is, plus two to regular crossbows. Although we're kind of getting that already with the in Inquisitive chain. Uh, I, I splash, I, uh, splash uh, mechanic is good for splashes. If, uh, well, cheat build here. I'm doing a cheat build. Uh, my cheat build, it's a good question, uh, enhancements, is... Mo is it's six arty and six rogue and then eight of whatever else so i use uh, some mechanic mostly as battle engineer but mechanic is really good for more crossbow damage and if i could take 
at level three, if I got a bonus to damage, this would be even better. Um, I also do Harper because obviously doing anything with Artificer and Rogue, you're going to go so int based that you might as well take, you know, 12 points is nothing. But yeah, mechanic seems to be more for a splash build, although you use a lot of mechanic when you're doing the great crossbow builds as well. I know those were a big thing, the knockdown crossbow builds were a big thing for a while. Okay, so the last classes we're going to talk about tonight really are the Sorcerer. Well, let's get the Warlock out first. So what does the Warlock need? And it's really important because the Warlock needs some jack, but only if it's accompanied by some shit. The Warlock needs nothing, guys. The Warlock is not... I don't think it's so overpowered that it should be the only thing running. But it is in a solidly good place. There's there's absolutely nothing that needs to be done. Warlock gets some bonus bonus spells, gets some bonus feats there tied to your pack. They get pack magic, they get pack skills. Warlocks need nothing. The warlock is if the idea is to make everything just a little bit less than the warlock, warlock needs nothing. Mm. Yeah, I have to play warlock. I, I actually admire people that don't play warlocks i like to use warlocks to, on a first life to get on a tune i think or the first say the first tune on a server because they're so cheap to run but after that i don't play warlocks after that I use warlocks to farm favor a little bit on a on a brand new server. I built a warlock just today to run uh, with uh, bad skills over on Orion, and really I cannot see myself if that character you know the character is going to hit thirty and then yeah just farm for gear when I ransack the chest with more interesting characters. That sounds like what I would do. I mean, that's basically what I did on Argo. I don't even play my Ar I don't play my warlock even here. I he did a life, and I've got a warlock halfling for basically the uh, summer games, the halfling summer games, and that's it. Uh, warlock kind of bores me. Yeah, you're too hipster to play a class everybody likes. It's not a bad idea. No gigan pants. You know, you do that and you do the quest and you help you help build up your guild whether you join one or not or but make your own. It's really, you know, easy button questing. You know, level 15 warlock cone blaster is going to own face and in Ravenloft, well, even Raven, even Ravenloft, Ravenloft hard, I guarantee it. Even on a first life, Illy, you might need to to practice a little bit. Oh, I usually do this second or third. I don't know. I usually do this different, but I usually use it. You know, you know, level. F uh, I usually use a deep gnome, one wizard, fourteen warlock. Uh, I think the gnomes are kind of cute. And I keep the one wizard so I can get the free shield meta magic. And then it's just, you know, run it up to 30, collecting all the gear I'll need for all my other tunes. Uh, you know, lots of Ravenloft heroics and then epics. You can't even, I, yeah, there's not one any one thing you can do to a warlock. Anything that's going to make a, I think a lot of things people can think, well, you can take away from it. But I really think that if you have to shrink a tune or shrink a class, you failed at the beginning. Oh, so you've already run a saga? Did you? You, you ran probably ran pirates, didn't you? You, you? you like the pirates, and pirates is relatively low level. Any any level any. Iconic, there's the word I'm looking for. The any iconic can run that uh, run that quest line 
run that saga on elite get all that sweet sweet renown and really boost a guild I'm just waiting for bad skills to send me my invite yeah and at level 15 like I said with a uh, with a warlock even the level 10 saga 10 through 12 saga of Ravenloft is is doable and then at that point you know then you're farming for level 10 gear Ravenloft gear to outfit your tune and everybody admits that the, the Ravenloft gear is really so good well the level 10 let's take the level 10 medium armor the code of the traveler its stats are the first time I was able to replace that and get as good as much armor class out of anything I needed to put on the level 27 epic emerald guard so literally you can wear the Ravenloft armors until level 27 kind of like the way you could do the same with the you know, no worries before it was nerfed this year and it made everybody mad and I can understand it because Ravenloft gear is a thing and it's easier to get and it's just not as nifty as maybe anniversary gear because it only comes once a year so there's one of the few times where me and the angry mob probably synced up a little bit I thought it was a little chintzy because no worries was no not really that much better than Ravenloft gear at least at that level oh I got Myriot So the last classes are the Sorcerer and the Wizard. And even though I've not played them, and I don't play them, I don't, I really don't. I don't think anything needs to be done with the Wizard because it gets so many free meta magics. You know, it gets not quite fighter level, but it gets five levels of meta magic on its way up. And I think really. If you get five free feats, then if you can't build one, then you just are no good at building for that type of character. And I admit, I guess I'm not good. There are not that many named weapons in Ravenloft. I do admit that. But the one you get free at the beginning, well, there are lots of them. There, there's that. And then when you do the second chain, you get the Barovian ones and then the second the third chain you get the macabre ones and you run enough they just start dropping it's kind of crazy um, one's good at uh, one's good at uh, undead the other one has vampiric on it so it's good for helping keeping you alive they're not bad weapons and they certainly, you know, have the strength in them to take you past, well, at least up to level 20. It may be a good point, Doc, or maybe I get so tired because level 1 through 4 on wizards do make it seem slow. That's a good point, McVegan Pants. I do think that the uh, RNG or the, the loot tables in Ravenloft were seriously tight. Those of you who have been watching me on Bard Life know that I have been uh, severely grinding Ravenloft. And it has literally taken me, what, seven months to just get these items, the ones highlighted in, in yellow just on Kyber and I'm still missing ones that I want I still don't have a Van Richten's cane and I still don't have the Shadow's Footsteps and for me those are really important they will actually complete like three builds yeah the one thing I do like about Wizards now are the improvements to Eldritch Knight because what I used to do is I would select feats for casting, but I'd be totally Eldritch Knight immediately up until like level 8. 
I wouldn't even bother with casting. I learned that was the only way to get through because I only really have taken Wizard 220 once, and that was 3C, who's now a paladin. So that tells you kind of what I thought about Wizard. I, I could I hit literally hit 20 and went, all right, time to TR. I don't care what my other project is. I'm not having a wizard in my list. And then I took Sork up twice. I took Sork up on, well, Cherenko here. He's he's got one, or Cherenko. And the other one was Siru, who has TR'd into another sorcerer, because I'm bound and determined to learn that. So what I think the Sorcerer needs is a, it gets a lot of power because it gets a lot of free spell points. So you can just keep casting and keep casting until you succeed. But that doesn't really offset everything because spell pen's a thing. And leveling up, <laughs> leveling up. Well, any, any character, but especially, you know, everyone, every class, you're going to run into that quest where it's got just the right thing to stall you. And the problem is, is that for sorcerers, the one thing that will stall them is anything with spell resistance, and drow are a thing. And you're trying to level up, and you go in, you have you know, lots of spell points, but not a whole lot of spell pen. And you go into the drow heavy quest, and it's all like, nothing I'm doing is working. And it's really disheartening. Uh, I think that there needs to be more things for, like, spell pen for, you know, to get through for half damage, or glancing, like, glancing blows for spells. Just so you don't see that little blue shield effect around the head of every smurf you try to kill you know it, it's hard and I use smurfs lovingly I have right now I have four draw characters right four there's Taramis no I'm going to disagree with you there, Thought Gore, because for me it's absolutely hilarious. Absolutely hilarious to watch a million mobs come around the corner after the casters. And it's probably because I don't play one. I get it. It's kind of mean-spirited. And I know it's me. But I also know a lot of, a lot of really good, um, Maybe not wizards, but sorcerers. I know a lot of sorcerers that specialize in AOE spells, and they're really good at kiting. And so, I think the the changes they made recently to how far casters can hear, and the fact that doors now work again, so you know they can't hear past the door, and that's true with most doors, not all doors. They've done good work with that. So really, I'm not too worried about the state of aggro right now. Um, and that's coming from someone who plays repeating crossbow people all the time. I mean, you know, for me, it's always been ridiculous where, you know, where ranged aggro has been ridiculous to the point where, you know, a sorcerer can cast a fireball that goes literally goes boom and has a flash of light. Doesn't draw any aggro from behind the door. But I'll fire one, one bolt out of this crossbow and literally, like from another quest, Eretricus will come in to stomp my butt. It's really crazy. It was really insane there for a while. Yeah. And no one wants to meet Eretricus when they're like on on fucking Corthos. You know. It's like, dude, not ready for you. So maybe I'm exaggerating a little. But it was always really crazy. I just, you know, sometimes I would make a mistake at the beginning of the quest. And I'd fire three bolts like that. And literally, the next thing I know, quest in my face. Every mob in my face. 
insane. What, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do? You can't do anything. That's what you're going to do. You better hope you have a good rune arm. That's what you're going to do. That's why I like to get the electrical ones. They have a nice good spread. Anyway, that's where I think all the classes are. And the only thing I didn't put on here put on here was fighter because what does fighter need? In all honesty, the fighter is what the fighter is, and you've got like nine extra feats or ten. One, two, and then every even on those. So yeah, ten extra feats. Suck it up, cupcake. A different hand. Other than fire. We need fighting man. That's what we need. We can go back to fighting man. Or fighting woman. Gotta have them both now. Hey, I got a question since I actually got people out there. Or some people. Uh, those of you who are, are interested, would you like to see the scout type? Uh, the scout type bodies for Warforged put into the game. The more svelte ones. I mean, they don't have like, you know, Warforged boobies or anything, but they're more svelte rather than looking like, you know, well, those of you who know, know Battletech looking like an Ostal. It's in Trotty Battle Pod. I figured Thotgar would. I hear most of the guys would because, you know, the whole thing that, you know, I've already explained my philosophy why I play some girl characters. Not to look at their butts because I have, I have this idea of the character in my head. And sometimes they, I know I'm mad enough to admit that sometimes they're a girl. You know, it's like, well, you know, I got this idea for a character and she's, it says she. So, but I also look at the Warforce and think, you know, they had this really good artwork in the, in the Eberron original manuals. And they were the scout types and, and they didn't, they weren't like hardcore, like girl type, but it was just a thinner style. You know, the idea of what you'd want from a scout. And I didn't. Get the, of course I do. What am I doing back here? So, I just thought maybe, you know, other people would have an opinion. I think that it just would be nice. I mean, I suppose the one thing you'd have to do to not be all like sexist. Or whatnot. We don't want. We don't want. We don't want to put any kind of bad things in our game. Any thing like that. But I guess one thing you'd have to do at the beginning would have the selector. Maybe you could have, still have male and female, but then you'd have body type. You know, scout or battle. That would work. That would work. The Titan. I don't know. I think that would be awkward to make on the character bone system. You'd have to do a whole new bone system. I mean, they've kind of already done it once for half orcs and, and PDK. But even then, I think that's just an upscaling. I, I think for a Warforged Titan type look, be, I they really think they would have to that would be a serious investment in time and the problem is the Warforged are already out now they've had to do a little bit of work to get tails to, and horns to work on tieflings but tieflings are going to sell the next pack I don't think you could get that with Warforged because Warforged are already out and you'd have to attach that to them and I think it'd be relatively easy to do that with the scout one, the scout body, because it's just, you now you could, 
easily modify the human model or the PDK model. But to do a dedicated Titan model, yeah, I don't, other than the fact that they, I don't think see them saying, well, this is a new type of war force you can play, but you have to play extra for it. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, what is it called? Wood elves? Wood elves are a thing. So they've kind of already done it, but they didn't have to build a model for the wood elves. And that's important, I think. I mean, basically, the wood elves are basically the human model with a bunch of LV bits stuck on it, really. And then they gave them the crummy elf dances. The See, I'd love to see more. I'd like to see them go back and do the dances, but you know, it's not going to happen. You know, that's, that's something that's already been, you know, that's from practically from the Word of God. We are not going to invest any time in making old, old dances new again. Oh... But I can dream. That's the entire purpose of this show, is to dream. Oh, I got Kithba up here. I have such good luck in Adaraxia's Haven. Alright guys, any more questions? Because I've covered everything I want, so this is really your time now. So if you've got anything you'd like to say about the state of the game or any questions you want to know what I feel about so particular part of the game you like, now's the time. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go do something else. Do I know any of the details? I took a look at uh, the forum about it. And I, I looked at what the cores are going to be. And you know, the forum's got a, a, a listing of how the tree's going to break down. And in all honesty, this is one of the few things it's going to take me a while to try out. Ooh, my favorite Arboth is here. Arboth is Italian for Scorpion. Anyone who knows Fiat knows that. I want to see a quest with Arboth. I want him to become a dragon. Anyhow, uh, the Inquisitive, get back to the Inquisitive. It's going to be one of those things I think is going to have to take me a while to try out. Because unlike Falconer, which gave me something I needed, Wisdom to Damage, or... Or Harper, which gave me into damage. Something tangible. The Inquisitive is more of a flavor tree. Like Vistani Knife Fighter. The problem, the difference between Inquisitive and Vistani Knife Fighter is I already had a build that could be improved with Vistani Knife Fighter. I already had a double dagger wielding Ranger Road, two wielding weapon knife fighting thing that only could be made better with it. The idea behind the Inquisitive is to, to basically have a new type of player in there. One that relies on light and heavy standard crossbows and they will automatically dual wield them. It's a very DPS flavored build and I can kind of see the appeal about it. It gives some nice, some nice effects and they're doing it because the Inquisitive is based off of, you know, uh, an archetype from Sharn itself. But I can't see me using it on day one. 
because it is so much of a flavor bill. I could build light repeating, or I'm sorry, not light repeaters, light crossbows or heavy crossbows to get through it. But I've already built so many repeaters or bastard swords or maces that for me to store a whole nother weapon type without having the build already sussed out, I, I just don't see myself playing Inquisitive on day one. Um, yeah. It's very much ranged focus. Uh, a little bit of... Um, with a little bit of crowd control aspects like, you know, heavy uses of diplomacy and whatnot to, you know, buff yourself and debuff the enemy. And that's what it's based off of. And I've got lots of builds that have lots of diplomacy, but I, like I said, I just don't see myself being a day one user of it. I, I It's meant to spark interest in really what is a forgotten weapon class in the game. I hope that helped. Um, a bag of holding from Harry Potter might help. Uh, a bag with the uh, undetectable extension charm, you mean? I became a little bit of the Potter nerd, I'll admit. Well, that's the whole thing. Um, I think they really tried to make it an action class by using uh, skills that are really strong in P and P in different ways, especially in uh, with diplomacy. Uh, di diplomacy is going to do more for an inquisitive than say just tell the mob, "Hey, don't shoot at me." I think it's going to have like short-term, non-savable stun effects and stuff like that, or something like that. I seem to remember something like that. I, I guess I could take a look at it. Let me see. Oh, I didn't want you to do that. Oh, well. I'll go back. Maybe just a moment. <laughs> Sorry. Give me just one moment. There we go. All right, for the Inquisitive, let's see. We have, you know, the core ability. I mean, one point of Inquisitive is pretty impressive. Impressive. You get one plus one to attack with all weapons and plus one to diplomacy, intimidate, and buff. And then the other cores are about dodge and diplomacy and being lawful. You've got to be lawful. Which is kind of funny because, you know, anybody who's played the game knows the most famous inquisitive in the game is actually a Rakshasa, so. I'm going to go ahead and recall out of this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we've got a lot, a lot of uh, regular crossbows skills, and law on your side, of course, uh, deal is basically law damage, but only with regular crossbows. Uh, you got an action boost in there. You got a multi selector for either more diplomacy or more crossbow. And you can, use, oh, there it is, right there. So you get 
with high with using your uh, diplomacy skills, you can put observation on them and get fortification bypass. That's pretty good. <laughs> They've got a couple of things for multi-classing. So if you play bard and swashbuckle, you can then take inquisitive to swashbuckle with your light crossbow, of course. <laughs> Rocks are lawful. So basically, uh, if you really want to pew pew things and don't want to take Artificer for repeating crossbows, you can now take this and pretend you're in a John Woo fantasy movie. Um, I don't know. That's one of the things that are going to be answered really quickly, I think. But looking at this, you can get so much extra damage with light repeating crossbows that I think this is going to be a boon to, to, to rogue mechanics. I mean, you asked, who's going to run rogue mechanics? Well, if you can get all the rogue mechanic crossbow damage, and you can get all the rogue mechanic crossbow abilities, and then you can get all of the inquisitive crossbow abilities, I'd have to say all of a sudden mechanic Rogue is looking pretty smexy for Solo Elite because then you can do all the trapping too. All you really need is heals. And since we already have Vistani Knife Fighter, which was so good for. I love just rolling up a, uh, a Shade Archai and throwing tons of uh, Vistani Knife Fighter on them. But I can see myself doing the same here with it. You know, even just to try it out, Rogue is probably going to be your best class. Vistani Knife Fighter, or not Vistani Knife Fighter, but Shade Archive Rogues are a thing. And they can all take Mechanic. Why not? It's a great way to test. Okay, I just changed my mind. I probably will be running this day one. That's what I did with Vistani Knife Fighter, huh? Well, an awesome question. Thank you for making me look at that, uh, the vegan pants. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to think about that. Certainly could be uh, reasonably good for a, <laughs> a lawful rogue. Well, there is that, you know. Just think of yourself as a white hat hacker way in the distant past. Same kind of thing. You're a white hat hacker. The light crossbow that is OP. Well, I've never heard of anybody say one is OP, so what, maybe trapsmiths? I don't know. Items. Items, named item by class. Or, yeah. Named weapons by type. Light crossbow. Well, the new one out of the anniversary party is pretty sick. The Diplomancer. Obviously probably put in this year for it. I guess I should have ground one out. So, but the Diplomancer is sick. You can always try to find a uh, Yeah, there's not a whole lot here uh, you, The, uh, what do you call it? Temple of Elemental Evil weapons are still a thing Yeah, <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop Well, one could make the argument that that would be true uh, another one I'm thinking of is, uh, I'm not too sure he's like a lawful rogue, but there's some of it. I, if you uh, go back and watch the old 80s TV show Hunter, and I had forgotten this. I mean, I used to love Hunter. But I forgot that the major plot point was the fact that he was a cop, but the rest of his family were all in organized crime. So... Okay. All right, somebody's playing with their parrot nearby. 
Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, I don't have a pet out. Why don't I have a pet out? I only have 39. I feel like so. I'm so behind on pets. Okay. I don't know about any other light crossbows that are OP. None of them seem all that OP to me. Okay, I have my latest pet. It's an invisible stalker, and since you can't see him, there was only one name I could come up with. Let me bring all this stuff back up because I need it. There it is. All right. Well, uh, you know, I've been online now for a good, what, what's the time? This guy gives me a time. One hour and 30 minutes, my longest one yet. So I'm going to call it right now. And I appreciate all the questions and I appreciate the raid, McVegan Pants. Thank you so very much for that. I'd like to thank for everybody who stopped by and just to watch, to lurk and whatnot. And I hope that Notes to Strike Chord Live was able to help you with any of your DDO problems. We will be on, oh, I gotta do the end stream thing switch. I, we will be on every Wednesday night, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. I believe that's 10.30 Eastern. I know it's a bit late for everybody on the East Coast, but it's the only time I got. You can follow me at the Cat Alice Thane on Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook at Gwen's Arcade. You can find my old archives at CavalryCavalry.com. And as always, I wish everybody out there peace and good questing. Have a great night.